G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So if I've done this right, you'll be watching this while I'm riding. Sorry, I got some nuts, but as you can see the sun's going down. I'm gonna schedule this. I'm gonna try to schedule it. And I'm gonna do a good job at scheduling it, if I keep telling myself that. Um I gotta turn the hose off. This tap here. Because I just washed my bike. And when I wash my bike, I use the water change system because I'm too lazy to run a hose from the back of the house. So the bike's all clean. Um, adjusted a few things. The main reason I gave it a really good clean, I know it's going to get absolutely filthy. I'm a bit paranoid about scrutineering. Being an 03, I think they're going to have a closer look at the bike. There we go, I finished the nuts. My mum always taught me I shouldn't eat and talk at the same time. But anyway, I'm all prepared. Like, more than one night in advance. So, basically, um, I want to move all the fish. Whoops. Just kicking my, my chain. I'm going full pro, guys. I even got the dry O-ring chain lube. I spent a lot on my chain so I wanted to get the right lube. So let's, I've got to drain this. I might take my jumper off. Um, then we're going to figure out how we're going to get that water down into that tank. If I can, I've got an idea. We've got to see if we can find enough pipe to make shift my idea. Alright guys, so it's time to vac it. Um, I'm low-key ashamed about how dirty this IBC is, but the fact was it did just have coals in it at the end there, so um, I pretty much, with the um, basically with the rate the fry grow in these IBCs, I can pretty much do a batch without doing a filter clean if like so basically I'm moving this batch in here and the filter will be clean and uncycled and it's gonna I'm gonna cycle it with like a couple of these sponges or something and then the plan is that by the time the fish reach selection size that it I just reset and do the same thing again um, the last batch that was in here, because I had such a large gap between flower horn fry, I kept that batch way longer than I really want to. Um, basically, I want to be selecting out my sellers at four to five months old, and then at like eight months, pretty much, culling what's left. So, like, the fish that were in here were a year old plus. So, it didn't really fit my timeline that I kind of want to keep to. Um, so, the, so my plan is, if, is to have more regular batches. Obviously, I didn't have a big gap in the batches by choice. But, um, it's just what happened. We lost Charles and Elsa. Well, actually, I wouldn't even say the fact that we lost Charles was the reason. Elsa was infertile. Um, to this day, I'll never know whether he would have got fertile with age because he was a camphor and they can reach fertility at over two years of age. And he died at pretty much bang on two years of age. So it's like, did he die when he was reaching fertility or was he just infertile? That's something I'll never know. And I'll always question and it sucks because to this day I might be biased here but to this day I haven't seen a flower horn in Australia that was as nice as Elsa 
Um, comment below what you thought of Elsa. Um, if you're an OG subscriber. If you're not an OG subscriber, um, Elsa was my was a red-eyed camphor flower horn. Um, lacked pearling, but other than that, he was perfect. He was the best flower horn I've ever owned. Um, I was actually partners in in Elsa with someone, and then I ended up buying my friend out, and he wanted out of flower horns. Um, so Elsa became mine, and both of us tried to breed him. The reason his name was Elsa because we actually bought him as a girl, and as you can tell by my story I've just told, um, it wasn't a girl, but we just kept the name Elsa. Um, I don't name flower horns for the fun of it. The reason my flower horns have got names is because there's a little group of friends um, that we all talk about our flower horns and the names are more so when we're talking about breeding and we're talking about our next project it's so that we don't have to muddle up the which fish are which so when you're backing the tank all the way down like this here's a little tip so once you've backed the bottom like that get a whirlpool going in problem with this is hose is falling off um, and then just walk away for 10 minutes and most of the crap will settle in a spot and it, the stuff that you haven't got thus far will be in a spot for you to collect it's a pretty handy little tip um, did anybody else find that super satisfying watching me vac that? I wish I started filming when I started like you couldn't see the bottom at all after I took the filter out but anyway I gotta clean the filter um, sun's going down Where's the, oh, I just really I need to put a drain along here because when I drain tanks flow straight back into the shed um, I'm not going to show you cleaning the filter guys, you guys have seen this filter before. If you haven't seen this filter, scroll back in my videos and you can actually watch the build. The build. You probably have to scroll back like 300 videos, but this is a pretty cool little filter. I want to build more. Um, I want to build at least two more, but I just haven't got around to it. Time is not my friend. Alright, so the filter's clean. So this is exactly what I mean guys. I did a stellar job of giving you an example. Check this out. So all that sediment that was spinning, all in the middle, and along that line for some reason. Um, it's a wicked way of doing it. Obviously there's still a bit around, but I reckon we got like 80% of it in that one little area. Pretty proud of that one, to be honest. <laughs> Um, when I was telling you guys how to do it, I wasn't 100% sure it was going to work in the IBC. I've only ever done it in tanks. But, um, IBC is just a big fish tank really, isn't it? I'm stoked with this vacuum effort. It's going to be actually nice to have a refreshingly clean IBC. I need to clean the other one. This one doesn't actually look that dirty, but it looks pretty clean. Um, also, I've thrown another heater in that tank, so I'm on like, what, day four now or something of bringing that back up to temp, and the fish are all good. Um, so, I think I'm going to shut the eight foot down for a little while, guys, not forever. Um, I'm thinking, I think I told you in the, uh, in the other day's video, um, I want to try out a different type of heater. So, someone made a suggestion that's crossed my mind. Someone said build a wall here and fill it with foam um, I've actually thought of that so I've actually thought of just making a chipboard wall still doing the window cutouts or not even the window cutouts for winter who knows um, either window cutouts or no window cutouts um, and filling it with styrofoam balls the only problem is like if the balls like blow up into the tank it's going to be a pain in the ass gotta turn that off guys 
if I forget to turn that off, that pump runs like every two minutes for all, all night. So when I, when I um, do jobs like this, it's crucial to turn it off. I might get a, I might get my other hose and drain this faster. I'm getting pretty bored. All right, guys, it's just hot tips of the night here because I've got another one for you. So I've got a hose in there that's already siphoning. This big hose, I tried to suck a siphon over that that height, which is like 700 mil, and I couldn't get it. So, so I put the one that's already siphoning into the one that's not siphoning, and then we go up here. I filled, so I filled the part, the hose up with water. So now I just this is quite hard with one hand but I just chase the air bubble hold the hose higher than that and that's how we create the siphon on that one it's going to prove me wrong now that there we go job done this hose is just full of crap still from when we cleaned the um, the stingray filter um, so Let's get this done. This video is meant to be putting fish in, not emptying. Um, it's taken me three days to empty the IPC. <laughs> Alright guys, so it's pretty much empty. Um, one of the siphons has stopped, I think. And the other one's still going. Um, so what I've done, I've rigged up a pipe from the drain. There's a chance that that would pop off because it's only just sitting on there. But we need to climb up here. Move some stuff out of the way. Stand on the IBCs, which the internet told me I wouldn't be able to put an 8 foot on. Turns out they can hold an 8 foot and my weight. Let's see if that holds. Yeah, I think it's holding. It's going to make a huge mess if that pops off. So this is probably the quickest single quickest way to do it um then i've got to start netting the fish do you guys you guys don't really need to see me net fish do you um i was gonna say i set the tripod up but i might just use some youtube magic and then the fish will all of a sudden be in there all right so i've caught quite a lot but i wanted to show you something before this fills up so these pipes they've got holes in the side because i use them from something else look how much water is squirting out of those holes can you guys really see <laughs> um, even these tiny little airlifts, look how much water they're flowing. That's pretty cool. Um, that was, I just, look at that one over there. So much, that's a fair bit of water. Just for bubbles. And don't forget also, once the water level gets above that height there, it'll be even more flow than that. So, that's pretty interesting. This is actually going pretty slow. The reason being, if you look under here, can you see? Oh. Yeah, see that big kink in the hose? The joys. <laughs> Alright guys, and the fish are in. So, that filter's clean. And also, I ended up just chucking this sponge in here. This sponge is out of the top tank. Can I just say, check out how much flow comes out of this sponge with that pipe on there. It's insane. Um, if I tip it, uh, it slows down if I tip it on its side. But like, can you guys kind of grasp? Um, obviously you have to take away the bubbles, but I reckon that's probably like lots of litres per hour. Um, put this on there. No other reason than, oh, you, can you guys see? Not really. I can't get it on. Uh, no, that's going to make it fall over. We'll just leave that off. That that was on there before, but it was tied up with a string. Um, so, I'm pretty sure I got every last one. I don't really mind if I didn't. Um, but, so this tank here, I put the standpipe back on. I want to extend the standpipe. Uh, I want to fill this tank up all the way. While there's no fish in it, let's test it out, see if we can fill it. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, um, I basically used to have the water level 80 millimeters from the surface. I, I didn't want to go past too, 
two and a half foot, or it was two foot seven or something. Um, but I, I might as well, I'm going to go the whole lot. It's, it's three foot, but it's minus like two inches at the top for framing and that. So the, I, I want to fill it up. The only problem is I think that's 32 millimeter pipe. And it's the one pipe that I don't use anywhere else. I'm pretty sure that's the only piece in my whole shed, in my whole fish room. So that means, so that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So I've got to get a 32 millimeter extent uh, coupling, or I could just buy a piece of 32 millimeter pipe and do the old heat gun trick like I did with the other pipe. Um, yeah, I'm going to start doing that heat gun trick more. Um, if you don't know what I mean, just heat up the end of the pipe and melt it over the other pipe. Saves like two bucks on a fitting. <laughs> I know, I'm a cheap bastard. Anyway guys, I'm going to wrap that video up there. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm still on my bike and I haven't fallen off or given up. Um, it's 120 kilometers, so anybody who knows their off-road know, know, know it, know about. Um, 120 kilometers is probably about five hours on the bike. So if you've ridden five hours off-road, non-stop too, not, 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 um, maybe not five hours. Yeah, well, I was doing an average of 30 kilometers an hour last ride. So 120 kilometers. What's that? 120 times three. Am I thinking? One, two, four hours. We'll see. We'll see how we go. My maths was horrible then, but we came out with the right result. Um, so, I was meant to pack some of the car tonight, but dinner's ready. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pack the whole car tomorrow. I might, I'm might. i going live tomorrow, guys, definitely. We might cut it to a 30 to 45 minute live stream. It depends on how much I get packed before the live stream. Basically, um, I'm having two rest days from the gym. I didn't go to the gym today and I'm not going tomorrow. Um, I was technically reading up. I should have tapered my workouts down, but I didn't. So Wednesday, um, I went super hard at the gym. Um, to, and I'm like pretty sore today. I didn't even go to the gym. I went climbing stairs. Um, I climbed like a total of like maybe 800 to a thousand stairs plus coming back down them and then like up and down up and down up and down and i also went for a um jog slash brisk walk for a fair while anyway why am i explaining my workout to you now we're just gibbering um so i've got to pack everything and i'm finishing early tomorrow um i might start writing a list tonight um, I've got to remember my memory card. You guys, I need to buy more memory cards. I've got one memory card. I know, bloody idiot. Blake's Aquatics always tells me I should buy more than one. And I still haven't done it. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Look forward to the content next week. We should be back into the swing of actual fish stuff. Um, hopefully I'm still in one piece after the ride. Um, but anyway, peace out.